held for December 4th, 2023. Um, we're going to start with introductions. Um, I'm Michael Roach. I'm the chairperson of the board. Steve, Steve Dunett. I'm Sheila Peralt. Echo. I'm Echo Ma. Excellent. Okay. So, um, we're going to open the meeting with citizen and business time. Citizens or business owners may contact the Office of the Board of Health to, to request to address the Board of Health during citizen and business time. Seeing none, I'll move on to the second item of the agenda, which is a hearing for 2421 Danforth Road, Board of Health Order date. Chief, the building commissioner, um, and police officers, and a code response um, technician from Frontline Initiative. Upon the inspection, um, I found violations um, that some of the violations the um, some of the conditions um, which may give rise to the Board of Health. on them. Um, there is a time frame on them. Um, I think within seven days they need to, well within 24 one day they needed to be repaired. Um, based 21 days from now. Um, I admit I wrote this Usually I give them seven days to make repairs to all of this, but if it's like a bigger item, I do give them a little bit more time to make repairs to it. Um, I think um, with this meeting, what we want to do is go over some of the violation notices and see um, the board can determine whether these um, violations I wasn't given it in, in a timely manner. I don't know what the problem was. You know, I got it when I came and requested mm -hmm. it of Angela, and it was sent as a certified letter. Um, but it, it had been out before then and delivered by somebody who, who on the, I thought, on the Kingsborough Police Force, a woman. Yep, so the notice was delivered to Barbara. Um, by but not to me. Police Department. I, I understand that, but regardless, it was um, mailed to you, certified, which means that we received it, and mm -hmm. do we, we did receive it in a timely manner. 
melted us, I think you visited last week, but mm -hmm. I think you still have plenty of time mm -hmm. to go over the um, the Board of Health order. Okay. So, um, I guess what has been done since receiving the order? Has anything been fixed? Or? Um, I've, I've, uh, on the internet, trying to everything on the internet now. Thank God for the internet. Um, the proper way uh, position and piping for a wood stove, and I uh, replaced the uh, piece on the top. You know what I mean? The vent with uh, I had galvanized, which I didn't know was wrong, and so I re uh, by some miracle it fell from heaven. A black pipe just the shape I needed, and uh, so I cut it back to fit, and it went in. I got another black stovepipe. Um, I had done a stovepipe before, actually, so I knew I had time to do it. And I uh, took a piece of slate, and I added 16 inches on the front, you know, because it's all lined with slate on the floor. The slate and granite was all around it. And I cleaned up all in back, and I, you know, went over and got everything. There was crazy stuff back there. It was like somebody played a practical joke. I, in fact, found a, a Nerf gun <laughs> all wrapped up in a box underneath where I have like boxes. Right next to the stove, I have like a box where I had um, plumbing supplies and stuff. It was right. I mean, some, and it's a, I don't know, somebody put it there. I, I think I still have it. It was a Nerf gun. It was somebody was looking for guns, maybe? I don't know. So anyway, I got everything junky, all the stuff. Everything's from, you know, that area. So there's nothing there to catch. Only little iron hooks or whatever. That's it, and tags. That's it. So I cleaned up that. I put up a smoke detector. Uh, smoke in that other, what's that other? Um, CO2. I put one of those up and it worked because I opened up the stove today and some smoke came out and it ring, 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 ring. And I have a second one, but I'm having a hard time because it has, the, I don't know, the battery. I have to go back. And, something weird about installing the battery. It's a different style and I, I'm not sure how to, but I do have one working one right near, near the stove that does work. So. So maybe, if I may, maybe I'll go yeah. through the whole notice Oh, I put what the has door, been door done handle, all of it. door handle. You yeah. wanted a door handle? I had a door handle. And then I'll share but some I pictures with you guys, too, as to what, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, what I'm thinking causing like danger, but, you know, I put it back on so that you would feel better about this. You know, no, the door handle in my kitchen, I had it. And for some reason, I had removed it, and I put it in with my paper towel on top of the refrigerator. I reinstalled yeah. it. I reinstalled the door handle. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just go Bumper. over uh we'll yeah, go over line by line. Like no, 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 that's yeah, okay. just I'm just telling you the things I did. Yeah, so yeah. Know. So yep, so if I go over I think the report with um the board, maybe they can understand like okay what you're referring to. So I had the pump fixed. Okay. So let me just go over the report with them. Um share some pictures but it's not it's been not been very um, cooperative today. I apologize in terms of technology it's not
Yeah. So here's the property. This is one of the shed on the property with a lot of things in the shed. Um, so we have um, what, um, the violation um, number one is to lab the sheds on property. Um, I think this is another shed. So there's two sheds on the property. This one here is just the um, yard with a lot of things on it. Um, this is the main building. Um, the trailer, I think, is what um, has been called. And then there's a blue top up in front. Um, water um, did get in because you can see the water stain from the inside of the shed. And um, you can see the water stain and you can see mold growing inside. Okay. It's not moving. Can I just ask, so. Sorry, do you want to go back? Well, what are you referring to as the, the shed? Is that two different pieces yeah, put yeah. together? No, here's shed one, yeah. here's shed two. Okay. Okay. They're kind of falling apart. That's just the yard, and this is the main, um, the trail Trailer. where that's um, a mobile home. The okay. mobile, mobile with home with an add-on. That little square coming up. That's a um, pull that's out. That's a little addition. You pull out. Uh, you can tuck that out. in when you drive. Yeah. 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 If you want to move that, you you could put push that right in. But they put, you know, the, it's been worked on, you know, with wood and new windows and things. Okay. It's been a while, but yeah. Well, Jerry was sick, okay, and so it's very difficult to. Um, well, he had his friends over too. <laughs> oh, God. They collected things, and so did my son. They yeah, emptied houses the for kitchen. a living. Just a lot of stuff inside. The other one's in the hospital now too. Mm -hmm. He's having the same operation. He's having his leg cut off. Yeah. Turn about. Oh, it's really stuck. Um, that's the kitchen with the stove. I believe the stove is not working, or is it working? Because I think you baked some cookies when you were there. Um, I don't think the water heater is working because that's there's a little running working water. When we shut, when it, the thing shut down, it was working. Okay. We thought it was a pump problem, and then. Uh, yeah, this is just the kitchen um, with lots of stuff. But th that's the bathroom. Room. I mean, the guy that came up with quite a bit of money. This is how Barbara heats her water um, for when she wants to take a shower. I think that's a wooden stove. Wood, yeah. It, it feed it with wood. That's it, wood it's stove. a tree farm. Okay. So there's lots of wood around. Um, this is, I think, where um, that addition That's is. that little pump out, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can see. I removed the insulation, and he was, um, he had some friends go up on top and try to patch it. And he, we planned on replacing, you know, the plywood on the roof. But so you can see the mold and you can visual, see water visual coming feed, in, the water stain. Was leaking, I took the insulation out so it wouldn't be leaking inside. If there's any water coming in, I could see it. So that's and that's how it was. And I don't know. He didn't get to put the new thing on and went in the hospital and he died. Uh, this is another, I think it was another storage room. But he lived to 75, so he couldn't have been too unhealthy with diabetes. Yeah, that's that's pretty it's good age for a diabetic. All the cabinets really don't have any doors or. Um, I removed that. That was in sh where Sean was staying. I re that bureau has been removed. That was Sean. I think this is picture of the second door. Back door. Going yeah, the back door going outside. This is the bathroom, looking from the doorway. That's the shower. That's another. And I think that's how Barbara takes her.
her shower, she heats up the water and just kind of feel. Um, well, it was working when I put that seed in there. Okay. You know, it hasn't been out for that long. And that he had stuff from, the, he was sick. Okay. He had diabetes pretty bad. He had gangrene on his foot. And the water was working at that time. This is just the it hallway. Been out that long. This and I believe this is the back room. It does look creepier in the pictures, too. <laughs> How many rooms total? Um, so we got the kitchen, and then we got the bathroom, and I think we have the, no, uh, the bathroom, the How bedroom, many and then I like would say the three bedroom areas, and a living room, and a kitchen. And a bathroom. And a bathroom. I mean, it's a, it, it's a mobile home. It's, it's not, you know. Well, no, I mean, I've been in some apartments and condos that they sell for they I can't believe they how small they are. With and they sell them at the condo. Oh, my goodness. When I saw it, I was like, gee, that does seem like a good thing. Yeah. Really? Oh, that was all right. It's like both of them. Well, back in my parents, we replaced it, but it didn't look like that. My son was just flipped this one. That's what I'm saying. This and, year. and that's the, I, this is the back room. Two months ago. The end of September. Yeah, and they were the in. The windows, um, I think they're broken. That's well, why um, Barbara has it. Um, he died at uh, 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 Tops. Uh, yeah. In ha the hospice center in Havel Church. I can't remember what this is. That looks like a light fixture. Okay. Yeah, those, you know, they're open wires out there. I don't know how yeah. that happened. And, and there was smoke, like, you can see the smoke on it. It was covered inside, but I don't know. I don't know. I walked in one day, and he was there, and I looked up down the hallway, and I saw, I was driving Sean back and forth. This is the back day. door. You know, like picking and up. And I think if you close, close it, it, I think you can pull um, it to lock it. And put, um, put, um, I think, so right there. So it's like and a bad lock tree. And we put the rest of the sheets over in Pelham. On a, on a pond, they put a house up in an island. <laughs> he worked there. He so worked you can see the rotted um, rotten. I drove back and forth and every day. So well, it's probably not galvanized too. It's a rusty so place. Like That's uh, the roof. That's some of the um, extended the parts of that. Um, uh, uh, the bump up. Yeah. You can see a paint roller. You can see the shape of a paint roller, and it's um, like that. Um, well, there's an oil thing, mold, right? yeah. There's an oil spray. I believe that's. There's, there's an oil furnace evidently in the basement. That no, it's not. I thought you said it was a gas furnace. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a um, oil furnace, but it's upstairs next to the bathroom, and it's brand new, never been used. Did we see it when we were here? I didn't. You see didn't it. see it. It's in a closet. It's in a little cubby hole closet. Right next to the bathroom door. It's not down below. Okay. And actually, it's it's pretty dry. It's dry down there. I've been down there, and surprisingly, it is not. Thank God, because of all the water that's around, it's not wet. In the basement. Not wet. Huh. Yeah. Somebody. There is a. They built a foundation, a block foundation under it, the yeah. Yeah. trailer, and we were under the impression when we were there that the furnace was in the basement, so we never saw it. We couldn't oh. get. We couldn't get in there. But. Oh wow. No, I know you, when you guys wrote that, I said, well, they put it as a basement, but it's not, it's upstairs. Mm -hmm. It's brand new, it's never been used. Yeah. So this is... He put it in and then we started doing the wood. Because some people like cutting wood. They, I, I sort of like it. That's just to show uh, the exposure and the rotted wood. Yeah. Some people... That would be the roof. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Yeah, the roof. Yes. Can I say something? No, I don't know. So as noted, um, violation number one, dilapidated shares on property. Um, violation number two, so you, got, you can see power.
tires, chairs, water bottle, and all this goes throughout um, the yard and in the shed. Um, covers were missing to the electrical outlet, light switches. Um, cabinets are in disrepair. Windows are not operable and not weather tight. And, um, and the following um, violation notices are um, of the conditions that you um, may want to consider um, that it's unfit for human habitation due to these conditions. Trailer is in a state of disrepair with roof being covered in top and underside has rotting woods. Underside of roof panels is pulled down, exposing roof. Violation number seven, trailer does not have running water. Um, occupant collects rainwater for toilets and heat up water in pots to use for cleaning and bathing and use bottle for drinking. Um, violation number eight, ceiling is rotted and appear moldy from structural defects of the roof which allow uh, moisture to enter. Violation number nine, missing smoke detector and carbon monoxide detector. Um, violation number 10, provide wood. Um, wood stove are not properly vented per the observation, obs observance of the um, building commissioner. Um, doors do not have proper locks. Exterior, every exterior door of the residence shall be equipped with operating lock. Um, rooms and hallways are filled with materials and in addition are uh, the notes from um, the fire chief. So is there like um, a propane? Um, so the there is a, um, a standard residential tank on site, a 120 gallon propane tank, but it's not connected. I, I'm assuming it, it ran empty. Um, and so there's a 40 pound, like you would have on a trailer, uh, hooked up that supplies propane to, I believe, the oven and the hot water heater. Um, it's not clear you know, whether that's working or Schwartz heating water on a wood stove. Um, and the, there's no, uh, um, we would normally inspect and provide propane storage and oil storage permits, oil water, oil burner permits. There's no inspections or permits on record. Uh, and then the wood burning stove, there was carpet that was close to the proximity of the stove. Yeah, that's what she was trying to describe. She said she put some slate down. Slate down. Since if there was. It was carpet before. It was carpet. It was pretty close, yeah. 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 Indoor, outdoor. But I put, um, you know those uh, thick, heavy rubber things in, you put carpet. One thing I'm not sure that and if you I haven't been there way. that you're not clear on, I don't know, maybe, but Charlene lives in, the ho in a separate, in a house on the other side of the road. Mm -hmm. And this is all part of the same lot in this trailer slash structure is on the other side of the road. This listed is 93.3 in town records, but that's... <laughs> Are you two sisters? No. Okay. Relatives, though. No. She's no. sister-in-law. Your sister? Yes. Yeah. Charlene's okay. brother okay. was married to Barbara. Okay. So who is owner of the actual house? The, the trust. The trust is? Uh, is owner of what? Of the land. this the residence. Trail? residence right here. Who owns the property you're talking about? Oh. The trust owns the property it's on. Adam, could you help us with the 
So, so I'm unclear. So, okay. um, the the board of health order that issued, as is often the case, relied upon assessor's records, and the assessor's records have listed as the owner of record the Rose Marie T. McCoin Trust with Margaret M. McCoin as trustee. Uh, my understanding, based on a discussion that not all of you might have been present for, but a few moments ago with the two individuals who were here, is that um, Rose Marie um, is um, Charlene's mother, or was Charlene's mother, who has since passed. Margaret was Charlene's sister, who has also since passed, um, meaning that uh, the individual who the trust is named after has passed, as has the trustee. Without doing some deed research, I don't know what the status would be. Typically, trust will provide for successor trustees or an appointment process if there's no specific successor trustee named in the trust. Um, but tr trusts just don't typically dissolve on their own terms. So I heard a reference made earlier to um, to Charlene being the personal representative. I'm unclear as to how that relates to the trust, right? Because a personal representative represents an estate maybe the estate of Margaret O'Coin, your, your sister? Rosemary. Rosemary, okay, so her mother. Um, but her mother didn't own the property. The trust named after her mother owned the property. So um, I realize it probably sounds like a whole lot of legal mumbo jumbo, but it does make a difference in right. terms of how, the, how the, the succession occurs when individuals pass away. So we would need a copy of the trust to know for certain. Um, certainly for today's purposes for the hearing, we have the, rel the relevant individuals, the owner of the land and the resident and the um, in the, 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 the trailer or mobile home present, which is the important part. They have noticed they're here present to the extent they didn't have noticed, they will have waived that by virtue of being here tonight. Um, but in terms of you know how we deal with the matter going forward, if you were to choose to take further action, condemnation, uh, demolition, things along those lines, we want to be sure that we do a bit of due diligence first so we're certain that we know who owns it of record and that proper notices have been given before you do something that could affect the value of the property. So Charlene, I think um, you said you have the trust, yeah, the paperwork. I have, I have copies of the trust. Yeah. Do you have it with you right now? I don't have it with me right now. It's like this, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that it was something that could be, be lightly perused in a meeting. <laughs> and if it's, if it's an older trust, older trusts were recorded. Um, by statute, maybe 20 years ago, they eliminated that requirement, so trust no longer need to be recorded. Um, just certificates of trust get recorded, but there should be some record in the, particularly since the trust is it the owner. It was all done by Ed Adamski. He has okay. copies of all of it. Right. So there should be physical copies somewhere, right. and there should also be some record of it at the registry of deeds. Since we don't have the who's on the deed with us, if Charlene is the owner of the land, who would be responsible for making repair to the structure or be responsible in this case? So it's always the owner of record that bears a responsibility for making repairs under the state sanitary code. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm unclear as to who that is. I understand that Charlene is saying she's the owner, and I have no reason to doubt that. But when I try to reconcile that with what I'm seeing in the assessor's records, that it is owned by a trust with a trustee who is now deceased, we've got to connect those dots. Mm -hmm. um, but once we connect the dots, I mean, it could be that the sole remaining beneficiary of the trust is an individual who is deceased and is it's just unclear. So we have, we have to connect the dots and understand who it is that owns it of record. But it's the owner of record that's responsible. Um, so, you know, the owner of the property? Of the property, that's correct. So it would be the trust. Correct. And I, I guess I'm, I'm a little unclear as to what I, I understand that Bar it was said that Barbara owns the, the mobile home or the trailer. So uh, mobile homes and trailers are treated a bit differently than. than Residences. Residences are considered fixtures. They're fixed to the land on a permanent foundation. I understand we have some indications of a foundation here in some portions, but um, there is a distinction in the law between mobile homes and trailers and single family residences. If it's a single family residence, then it becomes part and parcel with the actual property. Typically, uh, trailers or mobile homes, by virtue of the fact that they can be moved, whether they're on wheels or they can be put on the back of, a, of an 18 wheeler and, and moved away, 
uh, they're considered personal property. So typically, the owner of a mobile home owns the actual personal property, the actual home, the, the, the mobile home or trailer itself, um, and places it upon land that they typically lease or have a license to use or permission to use if it's a family member. Um, but the fact that that individual owns the personal property doesn't necessarily make them responsible for, for satisfaction of the, of the code. That, that obligation is on the owner of record of the underlying property. Could I ask how long the mobile home has been on the property? Well, I say 30, 34 years or so. My son was born in 1986, and we moved in there when he was 10, month, 10 months old. 86, 87, say, uh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. He was approximately 10, say, okay. we'll say a year, okay? Was, I think he was 10 months, but. 87, 1987. That's when we moved in, Sean and I. Yeah. We came from Fletcher's Quarry over on the other side, New Westford. Jack Fletcher used to live in it. The kid that owned the Fletcher's Quarry. He used to live in a trailer? He was over in Fletcher's Quarry. They pulled it over. Sean was a year old, a little less than a year. Do you live by yourself in the trailer? I am now because they both just, Sean died. Who was your husband? Uh, no, no, my your son, son died. He was 35 years old and he died in 2021, September 3rd, September 3rd, 2021, in uh, Trenton Hall. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, you know, I thought Jerry, you know, he was getting, he was treating his foot, we were treating his foot for gangrene and it healed up. And so I said, oh, wow. And he had visits every week for a wound doctor and then, um, you know, put whatever, Jadidine, mm -hmm. a couple times a day and whatever. The foot healed. But, uh, and that's your husband? Yeah, but then they said, he said it hurt. And, and I said, was it? Field. And then visiting nurses were coming in. Whatever. He ended in the hospital and he died. You know, diabetes is, uh, I've learned a lot about complicated disease. I know. Uh, so do you have any other children? I have another child from a, a previous marriage when I was 19 years old. Um, a daughter. Her father lives in California and has since. She was two years old. She's uh, 50 years, 52. She's 52 years old. She's a registered nurse. And she's local. She's in Manchester right now, yeah. Well, she's actually moving to Maine. She's in the process. She had a house in Manchester, New Hampshire. Okay. But she's moving into the small little cubicle right now, and she's in the process. She sold her big house and is going through sometime this week, I think. So just to give you a little bit more background, um, Ace Ben did get involved in this situation. Um, Ace Ben has provided um, Barbara um, housing applications that she can apply for. Um, I, I don't think that's been done yet, am I correct? I have an application. Well, I'm, I'm not certainly not interested in living in a tent on the sidewalk. So. Yeah. <laughs> I can um, tell you that. I a bit chilly. We did speak with um, the Saints Farm Housing Authority, so if you apply, I think as soon as you um, can, you can um, get on the list, and then depending on your situation, you may, may be moved up to the top of the list. And right now, I think they do have one opening, um, one apartment yeah. open. So um, you may want to consider doing that as soon as possible if you are interested in the Saints Borough Housing Authority. 
Authority. I don't even know where is this in the world. It's just um, down the road on Middlesex Road. So just a little bit farther down the road. Is that where you from? Like the um, friendly, yeah. The school over there. Yes. Yep. The NDA. Right from the NDA. Yep. NDA. So is that, I mean, you think my place is total and it's not worth fixing, is that what you're saying? Do you have the money to fix in, with these orders? Can you repair these? Well, I took, I, I actually had the pump fixed. I had somebody come up because the reason why the water wasn't working, my husband was told by a plumber and he had a piece to replace, and it was like the switch on the top of the uh, pump. And he he did this all about a month before, you know what I mean? He went, we went under, and he said he couldn't do it. He, he said he wasn't feeling well. So I had somebody come. I called, uh, I went on Angie's list, and I found some people. I actually, I had the pump up and running. So we, not I to interrupt you, but system. we have like four, emergent, urgent violations that need to be fixed. All right, I have four. Can these be, can we get a well, repair person to fix these or no? Um, I think there's gonna be some regulatory issues with that. A lot of regulatory issues. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what I said too. This, that's probably 20 to $30,000 worth of things that need to be done today. Yeah. If to bring it up to some time, even to just go. to get close, close to code. You're kidding, really? No, uninhabitable is uninhabitable. Isn't that the point we're at? Well, yeah, I first want to determine if this, these can be repaired or we just, <coughs> um, is not an option. And then Carrie just points what it out. What about my options. not wanting the person there? I, I don't think we're going to get into the okay, middle we're of the not getting into this as a board of health matter. Excuse yeah. me. Mm -hmm. Well, that could be why it was maliciously damaged. It has nothing to do with that. You didn't want me there. Well, oh, please. Hey. Please, let's not go. Oh, yeah, let's not. That's a one that's so there, there's a lot of there's a lot permitting of. and possibly zoning issues with the structure being there. I like to say, oh, wait, I know what you guys are saying, but I was told my husband was going to see um, a lawyer. He's from North Andover. And uh, he's been going to see him for quite a while. And uh, there were issues about um, him not inheriting anything. His, he was written out of the will while his mother had Alzheimer's disease. My husband was written out of the will. And I was told by these people Fiction. not to um, <coughs> Uh, why have the paperwork? To, oh my. I was told by. This point is kind of a press site anyway, Sean. It doesn't have yeah. anything to do with. Right. Right. Um, but it could be a reason why. What, I guess what, what the chairman is asking is if, if, it, was, is it, worth if it was legal for you to fix it, do you have the means to fix it? Can you, can you come up with twenty or $30,000 to bring it up to code? They're not going to bring it up to code. They're going to get it so that it's a little habitable. Yeah. All right. Now, well, depending on what. I have a question well, for I, you, Adam. I got, yes. I got some. Um, that was going to have a, That was his I question, got some though. Estimate. I got some estimates for the plumbing. Do you have the means to bring it up to what? Do I have twenty or thirty thousand dollars? Correct. I do. Would I put it towards that? I don't know. Okay. So, Paul, you had. I mean, a question I don't have a lot more than that, but I. Right. You know. I'm going to have Paul ask a question to the board. Um, just to go back to what she, you know, she said was about if the landowner doesn't want them there, that would be a private and civil matter to for eviction by her. Or it it would be. I mean, so, and that that goes hand in hand with the question that was asked before about responsibility. And and part of the challenge is I only have and right. this board only has yeah, you know, limited right. information. Mm -hmm. So we have individuals here who are not the individuals whose name is in the assessor's records who are the individuals named in the notice in the order of uh, notice of violation that issued um, 
the, the regulations speak about notification to the owners and or occupants. So there's a recognition in the, in the state sanitary code that um, you know, whether it's a situation like this or the more typical situation, which is you've got a tenancy and you've got a, a, an absentee landlord, you've got an owner and the premises is of questionable habitability, right. there's an inspection done, the tenant says, you know, it's not my responsibility, it's the owner's responsibility, the owner says it's the tenant's responsibility, they're living there, the notice goes to both. Um, ultimately, inevitably, in my experience, boards of health end up having to do a bit of due diligence on their own to sort out who it is that they can, they can pursue. Um, but in terms of the relationship, the, the, the lease or the license or the you know, occupancy with or without permission, that's a private matter between the owner of record and the, 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 uh, the tenant or occupant of the, of the, in this case, the mobile home. So another follow-up question to that. Could the trust, if we can deem the house to be built up to a habitable condition, So there's good news and there's bad news there. And, and, and I say this strictly from a legal perspective and not from a practical or emotional or sympathetic perspective. The good news is it's only the role of the board to determine whether or not there's a sedentary code violation, whether the order that issued was accurate. Once you've determined that it is, you've made the first finding the regulations call for. The regulations then call for a second finding. You can make it later or simultaneously with the finding that the premises are unfit for human habitation. And the second finding is sort of a two-part finding. It talks about determining that the residence or portion thereof uh, shall be condemned, and then in order to vacate the residence prior to condemnation. Um, that doesn't have to happen simultaneously with the finding that it's unfit for human habitation. So what I've seen some boards do is they make the finding that it's unfit, and then they provide a reasonable time frame within which it is to be brought, I'll use the term up to code, but it, you know, brought further into compliance. Um, of course, there can then be requests for extensions of that deadline by the owner or the occupant. Um, but if that deadline is not satisfied, at that point, the board would then make its finding pursuant to a further hearing uh, of condemnation in order to vacate the premises. You sort of have to do that hand in hand with recognizing that you've got a tenant who has nowhere else to go. Um, you're, you're not gonna, if the tenant doesn't vacate, you're not as a board of health gonna knock the trailer down with the tenant inside, right? Mm -hmm. So you're in a position where, and as you get into the winter months, it's colder outside. So you have to sort of handle that hand in hand with trying to find other solutions. So most boards of health will look to local housing authorities or housing trusts or, um, and try to facilitate a relocation of the tenant in conjunction with the determination that the premises are unfit for human habitation. And then, you know, an order of condemnation requiring the, the, the tenant vacate and uh, sometimes demolishing the, the residence if it's considered to be a possible attractive nuisance just by virtue of it sitting there. Thank you. So a lot, lot of information and it's, but, but the short version is it's the role of this board to determine whether it's unfit for human habitation and then how it gets fixed, by whom it gets fixed, who's paying for the fixing, that's really the burden and obligation of the, not to say the town can't assist and try to, but you obviously can't pay for it as a town. Um, and I don't, I don't know where the money could come from. Now, Barbara, C C Carrie mentioned about the Kingsborough Housing Authority. Is that something that you would look into as well, since you have the application for it? I have the application, and I, I did fill it out, but I don't know exactly what um, how it works, or you know, is it if it's a low income type thing? If you're allowed, I don't know. I don't know a lot about that type of thing, but if you have. Um, if your vehicle is worth so much money, or right now I don't have a car and I was thinking of buying a, a, another car, but I don't know, how do I qualify for that? That's just what I'm saying, the qualification. How do you qualify for that? Is this, what type of housing is it? I've never had lived in housing. So how do you qualify? I think Kingsborough Housing um, Authority is, I think, subsidized housing. Um, friendly mm -hmm. is, is elderly housing, yes. And it's um, a subsidized housing. And I think to get more information, um, talk to H-SPAN and talk to um, Kingsborough Housing. The thing housing. is, I think I'm, I'm in a healthier situation where I am right now than I would be if I was surrounded by a bunch of elderly people that were right on the bridge. You'll, you'll, you'll get be in your own apartment. apartment. 
Right, I know what it is. Yeah. I know. But see where I am You right You now, have your own space, your I, own apartment and your own space. I'm not used to being in, you yeah. know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And with COVID and all that and people being sick, you know, I can, you know, I've been there. I know what it's like. I know people that live there. They lived there when they were ready to die. That's what most people. You said you'd never been there. What, to the housing? Yeah. Brimley. When did I say that? I said didn't I know what that place. Did you just say she did, had never been there? No, I said I didn't. I said I'd been there. I know where it is. So you can see the the nuns school. Yeah, I knew two people, Debbie Garvin. Okay, actually Debbie's dead now. And my girl, my father dated lived in there. And um, I visited Debbie when she lived there. I think Russ Hughes lived in there for a while. I don't know, but people the people I know that lived there were um, like desperate and on their way out, uh, whatever. So would you know. consider that as a temporary? Would I consider being desperate and being on my way out? No. I mean, that's, no. It, that's why I thought that was like a final. Like a temporary housing with, within the town of Do you of think I'm in immediate danger? I just told you all the things that I did and I had the pump fix and I got a quote for the, um, I got a quote for the, uh, plumbing in the kitchen. I had a plumber in and I got an uh, estimate for the plumbing. He said it would cost six grand to uh, redo the plumbing. And he said putting a new water heater in and re, um, you know, piping with copper, you know, he said it, was, it wasn't up to code, but it, you know, it, do I have a right, if it was up to code, do I have a right to be there and have propane like that? You know what I mean? There's to, a to, to have propane on your property like that, is that okay? Yeah, it, it has to be permitted by the fire department. The plumbing would have to be inspected by the plumbing inspector, and then we would give you a permit to, to store propane for that use. You can get, individuals can get propane? I know but you can't use those little tanks that you're using. You can't you use You have to have a, someone deliver it. Oh, you have to have a delivery it up. for it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And then but they that, refill the propane on a regular basis. Yeah. So well, I didn't know whether to do that because I think a few years, well, not a few years, more than a few, over in Westford, they discontinued anybody. No more. No more propane, they said. So Did you know that? You can have propane in Massachusetts. You can have propane? Yeah. yeah. But under under the regulations, it has to follow the regulations. Compliance. So, to set, so in order to set up something like that, that would cost a little. He said six grand just to put, you know, why you're in a hot water heater? And most people I told that they, they just looked at me and said, "You're kidding." So as you can see, That's there's a lot, for there's a, a, there's a lot of expense in what? order to bring it up to a more habitable but that living is, environment that that, that's a, that's an <coughs> that checks off a lot of these boxes here. I see that. So we're trying to figure out. But any everybody when I told them that I had a plumber in there and they wanted six grand to put a water heater in. Do you know how much water, water heat costs less than 500 bucks? Maybe it costs less than 1,000, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I, I think people, what we're trying to figure out is kind of first, can okay. these be immediately fixed? I don't know cost or estimates or quotes, but we have to try to figure out if these can be immediately fixed, then we have to enact on, on some of the violations that are here which may cause you to be moved or move out of the actual you have to, um, you have building to unit itself. And we, there is opportunities to move into what we're hearing is the Tingboro Housing Authority <coughs> may have a place that you can get into, but you have to take some steps of applying and, and getting on the list to get in. But it sounds like that's urgent too, because they do have a spot you know, we don't want to lose that opportunity. <coughs> so we're trying to figure out if we can work with you from the board to say, if that is an option for you. I know. That, that could be living there while this is trying to be repaired well, or, oh. you know what I mean? To try to keep you safe. So you can be living somewhere else while the repairs are being done or meeting the permit.
comments in the code. I don't know. So I think what the board well, is looking at right my now. My husband has a lawyer. I mean, the lawyer, my husband's dead, but he, he, he is working with a lawyer. And this person told me he lent my husband some money for the lawyer, and he told me that the property is in litigation. So what, what the board is looking at right now, Barbara? But they said... Barbara, I'm going to have, I'm going to have Carrie ask a quick question of you. Okay. I've lived in there, in there for 34 years. I don't have any sickness. I don't have COVID. I don't have pneumonia. I don't have... You should see how nice and warm it is in my living room. It is warm. It's toasty warm. I hear that people that live in apartments in the city, um, that trailer retains Heat. And in the in the summer, I don't need. It, you ever hear an underground house? It's how cool your cellar is, or whatever. It has this. Barbara, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Carrie okay. ask you a question. Okay. Yeah. So Barbara, I, I, I don't know. You're if you're, you're, you're a tough woman, but like I'm you know, being woman. able to like um, do what you do um, have been doing with your husband and all. Oh. I I I. No doubt you're you're a tough woman and you know, but right now right now you're in a place with no running water. You said you're fixing the pump but the pump is not working properly. The pump is working. Okay. The pipes are leaking. Yeah, the pipe is leaking. So this issue with the that um, unit and there's a lot of like a lot of violations. So what the board right now is gonna do is determine whether your um, trailer is unfit for human habitation. The board is willing to work with you while you're trying to find a place instead of kicking, you know, removing you or condemn the place and removing you. They're willing to work with you, but you have to, I think, show the board that you're willing to work with them too. Because, like you said, you'd rather have a place to stay than living in a tent on the street. So that's where we'll. I that's why we reach out to the Kings Borough Housing to Authority to like see we if if they do have a place with you. But you have to take that step to apply for it and see if you can get. But it. I don't know what you know. It's, I'm sorry to say this. It's just a, an odd feeling that I get because everybody I knew that moved in there was on their way out, and so this is the feeling I get about moving into that place. You can of, make it a temporary the, move if you want. I mean, these people were you know crippled beyond or. So sick that they couldn't, you know. I don't know. I, I guess I'm just not ready for. It. I just lost my husband. Okay. You you can make it as a temporary move and then try to find an alternative house for yourself. Barbara, 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 I'm going to need you to hear what Carrie said. This is very important what she's saying. Yeah. What? If if you feel that Kingsborough Housing is not the place for you, but at least like have that as a temporary place for you to stay while you during what. So that you can, if you want to fix up your place, bring it up to code, then bring it up to code. Or if you want to find an, a, another place to stay while you're staying at the Kingsborough or Housing Authority, at least you have a place to stay. It doesn't have to be a safe place My for you. My cat. I think they, they allow pets. They do? Yes. But I don't know if she lived there. I, could, I don't, this is ridiculous. Well, what I'm hearing, just to help you out here a little bit, but what I'm hearing is even if you were going to fix it up, you you probably won't be able to stay there in the meantime until it's fixed. So the priority is probably trying to find some place to stay. I wouldn't for a be few able months. to stay there. I'm not saying that. I'm just that's exactly what the what roof, I'm hearing. The roof, the roof, right on on the exterior building. Carrie has the list of things around. Yeah, we have, we have we have. Violations that need to be addressed, some urgently. Usually some of these repairs, you can't be in the house while it's getting done. Let's say they're taking off the roof to put on a new roof. You yeah. can't be well, living there while they're trying to do that. can't wait the spring. <laughs> mold remediation, things like that. Yeah, mold remediation needs to be done. Um, a, bunch of, a bunch of things. So we're trying to work with you to see if temporary housing would be there while you determine whether or not to repair or fix. Is this 
an option. What do you mean? Is filling out the application and applying for the Tingsboro Housing Authority an option? I have, they told me to fill out the application, so I do have an application filled out. So I'll fill because it out. Because I didn't, yeah, I didn't know, I don't know what was going to happen. And I really, honestly, um, you got to be kidding me. I have just washed from one end, there was somebody in there, and uh, there was dirt. Like, and I thought it had to do with mold myself. Uh, when my husband finally went in the hospital, because I was moving all the time, and I noticed, I looked around and I said, what's up? There was this much dirt, and this was never, since the day I moved in, there was never anything comparable to this. Not even the day I moved in there. There was like less than an inch, about three quarters of an inch of dusty looking um, dirt, like I would think it would be dirt that would be dusty and uh, there was four vacuum cleaner. Uh, Bobber, Bobber, I mean, there was, it looked like malicious damage to me. Inside my chat, I washed the ceiling, all right, to the floor. I just did this so that I would, I could be comfortable where I live. I am not sick. If there was mold in there, I washed every corner of that room. I washed every corner everywhere. I have just cleared out around my wood stove like you asked me to do. I've installed a thing, you know what I mean? A beeper. I've done all this work for what, nothing? No. You're saying that there's, oh, there could be a little bit of mold on that ceiling over by where the leak was. But we have also redone the top of that roof and I still have more things I was gonna do to get through the winter. I wanted to get through the winter. I have wood cut. I did all that for nothing. So you, you could tell me to leave? I, you know, I washed that place. I went through every corner of that, of that place. And plus I took out a bed that's in the back which, where Jerry was sleeping on. I removed that bed and I put it outside. I just rented a truck to get rid of everything in, the, in, in my yard. I have... Um, okay, um, we'll know, stop right there. If I did all this work, why did I do it? Barbara, there was a number of items, not just a couple of items. There was a couple of items that required immediate attention. Right. But there are more items on this list that require a lot of attention. And that for us, we want you in a safe place so that you are protected in a safe place with a roof and windows and heat and running water. And I'm sorry, but this place that you're living in is not safe. It's not safe for you to live here. And I would never want to say, go back and live in this condition because it really, Barbara, is not safe and you, you deserve better. You deserve better than this. And so you have an opportunity to perhaps get into the Tingsboro Housing well, Authority. I, I, just so to be honest with you, I like where I live and I sit there and I say, everybody's got their air conditioners on and when that sun, which is now coming down, I had to leave parking lot in Royal General. I couldn't sit in my car. That beam, sun is beaming down like you can't believe. And where I live, I barely turn a fan on in, in the summertime. And I'm I sure you have where beautiful I memories I like of your life memories. there, Barbara. Oh, really? But when and how would you like me to walk into your home and tell you that? That, right you know, now? I'm unsafe. We didn't have any sickness. My water is sick. I'll tell you what. I think somebody's trying to drive me out of there. That, that's what I think. And I have, my husband has a lawyer and uh, he told me not to do anything. The, I was told, I haven't talked directly with him, but if, unless I'm being fooled, 
a man lent my husband some money, and he told me not to. Um, if how come I'm all of a sudden in danger? I've I've lived there for a long time, and I've just reinstalled everything. I've washed that place from one side to the next because I thought there was a something. Whatever. You Your can see a roll them off on the outside of my way. Like maybe somebody her. doesn't want me there. But if they do it to me, they'll most likely do it to somebody else. They get away with it up there. Because nobody can I was gonna put up cameras. That's what I was gonna do. I was gonna get a simply safe and put a camera up so that I would know who was coming in and out and who was around. Cameras, that's what people do today because of what's going on with the way people act. Uh, I, I, as far as the money goes, I'm not sure, I do, I haven't double checked my, um, my lucky savings account, but uh, I have some money, and uh, I don't know if I left, if I don't, I mean, going, just the thought of going into that means like my life is over or something. Uh, maybe I could find a place to go up in Maine where my sister lives or go to uh, Arizona where my brother lives or, you know, Wisconsin where my other sister lives. But if I, if I, I just did all this work to try to keep this going. I just paid a guy and I still owe him for fixing the pump. It works. So why don't you look into that option of, you know, turning to your sibling to see if you can stay with them? If, all of a sudden I'm in, all of a sudden now I'm in immediate danger. I mean, this doesn't make sense to me. You know, how, I mean, I'm in immediate danger right now. I, I had a plumber look at the thing, he told me it cost me about five grand, no, six grand to fix one water heater. So I thought I'd take, get a second opinion and I'd make sure that it was okay, like with these guys saying that you can get a propane. Would I have to pay for a propane permit? Would I pay that? Would I pay that? You would pay it, but the installer would have to apply for a licensed, licensed gas installer. So and these I, guys are, came I mean, to my house. This is just an opinion. You have to have some sort of permit or something, don't you? No? My opinion is any money you put into that, It'll, you can just light it on fire money, not the house. And the another thing <laughs> is, I don't even, my husband was paying his sister, and since he died, she hasn't, you know, approached me or anything. Okay. I have, you know, I got a question I, for Adam. Um, would the structure itself provide any value to the property? Like, are we getting into, like, affecting the trust and stuff like that? <coughs> No, I mean, I, I want to be clear, there are appellate rights, so if somebody believes they're going to be affected, they have a right to pursue their recourse in court. Um, but the state sanitary code gives boards of health the authority to determine when premises are unfit for human habitation, and then to go so far as to order them condemned and even demolished um, if the belief is that they are in such dire condition that they cause harm to the occupants or potentially to others who might even trespass on the property and find themselves somehow enclosed or injured by, by the structure. Um, again, this is not a determination necessarily that you have to make tonight. You can do both. You have the ability, and it's been, been noticed, to determine that it's both unfit for human habitation and that you're going to condemn it. You can also simply determine it unfit for human habitation and then provide uh, deadlines for things to be done. Um, again, I, I appreciate the statements that are being made by, by the occupant, it's, it's a difficult situation as I alluded to before, um, but the reality is, and I say this for everybody's benefit, and I know that the board members already know it, you know, the standard is an immediate danger. The standard isn't you consider the occupant to, to be in an unsafe condition. The standard is compliance with the state sanitary code. You didn't write the state sanitary code. It, it's, a, it's a regulation, it's hundreds of pages of regulations over several different sections of the, of, of the Code of Massachusetts regulations that go into great detail concerning everything from proper door locks to how a wood stove needs to be uh, uh, piped outdoors to how close it can be to carpeting to the, the necessity of running water. These are not your standards, they're state standards. Right. And so if, those, if they don't exist, then the state 
in, it says that you have the authority to determine, particularly if there are multiple of those standards that aren't satisfied, that that renders the premises unfit for human habitation. Uh, it could mean that it's it, it's an immediate uh, danger to the to the occupant, or maybe not. But it's still a violation of the code. Um, okay. And you've got twelve separate violations identified by the health agent here, plus another seven identified by the by the fire chief. One of which might have been duplicative. Um, I think the CO two detectors was, was listed twice, but that's still a total of eighteen violations. So, Barbara, did you understand that? the state has deemed the house through the sanitary code with these violations that it's unhabitable, not just the members sitting here on the board. The state, now where did the state come in? They, they wrote the code, oh. okay, for what needs to be done to make a house habitable. And what we're trying to determine is, can you meet these 18 violations to make? And Do I have those 18 violations written down here? Are they here? I just think, you know, I'm, I'm a little tired, I'm sorry. I've been working hard installing stove pipes. I have, <laughs> and I am tired. And my car's also broken down put that on top of it, all of a sudden my car was messed with too. How's that? It's right and beautiful. Wilmington Hallway, the fill of chairs. Um, well, I've moved that stuff. I don't know how a door from my father's house and a kitchen from like a top got behind my couch from my father's house in Chelmsford and he's been dead for I don't know how long. That ended up behind my couch in the living room and I just pulled it out and it was in the hallway. Um, I just installed uh, this one here. I put the handle back on the door in the kitchen. Rooms and hallways are not filled with materials anymore. I had some um, brand new rolls of um, quilted material and I moved, it was outside, covered with a tarp, and I moved a couple of them in to dry them out. Um, I plan, I just opened up my, I don't, I have a, a bucket shed, and I just opened it up and I was ready to pull all that stuff out and burn it. I had wood that was saved, and I found paint cans filled with um, some sort of liquid. I had, you know, wood from construction with ant cups underneath it and tops covering it in a truck out there. And uh, I found paint cans with some sort of liquid in it tossed in with my wood, my brand, this brand new wood that was covered with ant, you no, know, yeah, ant cups was all in there to keep it. And do you have it running water like right now? Do I have running water? Yeah. I have the pump is running, but I, it's not going through because I had the plumber come in and I thought I'd wait to talk to you guys, you know, about the situation. With not, I don't know much about propane permits and that. Not, not propane, just water. Well, that was, all right. Now, that's the second thing. Could I just have cold water? Would that be all right? No. You can, in the state of Massachusetts, you can't have a cold water flat. Boy, my mother could. You can't have cold, just cold water. You have to have hot water. You do? Oh my goodness, that's weird. Oh no, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just surprised that. All right, so if I had the water turned on, I would have to have hot water. I would have to have a hot water heater, okay? Because I had somebody come up there a week ago. I had, when you guys brought this over to me, I called up and found people. I had a man come up and get the pump. He fixed it. It cost me, I owe him $205, I gave him 165 so it cost me about 300 bucks to get, the, you know, over, over three, to get the pump running. They were very nice. They yeah. fixed so them. So Barbara, uh, I think in my So opinion. why did you uh, recommend that I do this just to have me, you know, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna use busting my balls for, you know, but I'm up there working my whatever. I'm, I'm washing walls. I'm pulling, why, why did I, why did you have me do all that? 
and then to turn around and you haven't even I just don't understand why you would have me do that and then all of a sudden tell me I should go to a place where people go when they're ready to so Perry, my, did you have on your plan to go for a re-inspection or is that how this works um, oh give me time to get you know I mean can I, I, can I let, know can I let Harry talk real quick yeah I can go and do a reinspection and see what she has done so far, but it's, in my opinion, it will still not reach the we still won't code. Oh, I know it's not going to reach code, but I needed yeah. some information. But that's what we're trying to determine. I, well, I needed some information about exact with the permits and all that. He pulled that trailer in there and didn't get permits. So I'm mm -hmm. saying, am, am I, um, is that an option for me? I didn't even know. I mean, when so the plumber, Barbara, here's the, your options. The plumber came in. Okay. He, he's. He is. I like. So I, I think the fact is, is, I like where I live. All right? Okay. But and I, I really didn't. You know, I, my husband just died. I don't want to be thrown into some. I just can't even believe that you. I wow. I would like a little time to. Uh, whatever. Regroup. Even if you. I think decide to fix up the I don't place. Think I mean, it's just going to cost you so much money well, to wake up the place. What would it cost me to place? rent an apartment? What would it cost me to walk out of there and go live somewhere else? It's it's a lot less than what you because Tingsboro Housing Authority they're subsidized housing. You don't have to pay much. And if anything yeah. at all. Yeah. Right. You need to go in the office and talk to them, and they'll tell you what you're eligible for. Because if you're going to just keep putting all your money and making repairs and it still doesn't meet the code and the board is going to end up condemning it, it's just a waste of your money. Use that money for something else Correct. that's for we yourself. We don't want to bankrupt you. So if if, I even if you, this housing, because this like your daughter if, am I has a place in Maine. Am I allowed to have? You have to, have to, you have to ask them. You have to go ask the office. They have the formulas and everything right down in the office, Brilliant really Terrace. They'll answer those questions for you. So if I have too much money, in it, I know that they sometimes they go, well, how come? How much is your? Somebody said this to me. You can get in if your car is worth less than two thousand dollars. Is there any of that true? I don't know how they. People there have cars. Big drive. They have nice yeah. cars. So, Mr. Chair, for for purposes of subsidized housing, there are generally income and asset limitations. Right. So if you're making a certain income or you have assets, you can't say, I'm no longer working. I'm retired. I have no income. But I have three point five million dollars in the bank. You're not. You wouldn't qualify for subsidized right. housing. Yeah, um, right. But chances are, and I, I'm not going to guess here. I don't know the numbers. But chances are, if you have a vehicle that's not a seventy thousand dollar Hummer, and you have uh, and you have some savings uh, that aren't you know seven figures in savings, you will likely qualify for subsidized housing. But you have to go through the application process. You have to list your assets. They'll input that information into the yeah. formula, and they'll determine whether or not you you qualify. Yes. And uh, I'll just add that, um, you know, certainly, you know, she's trying to make some effort to pick up the place, I understand that. But, you know, some of the real concerns are there's, there's three different sources of fuel there for heating and, and, and hot water that it's unclear, you know, how they were installed, whether they were, you know, whether, whether they were installed per regulation, you know, with the propane, the, the wood stove, and the, uh, the oil f furnace. The electrical, what we saw of the electrical system in the home, you know, is dangerous, particularly right. from exposed wires and extensive use of extension cords. Um, there are some, you know, some real safety issues there as well. Right. Do you have any questions? I know you've been quiet. <laughs> yeah, no, I won't. Okay. I don't have any questions. Okay. All right, I make a motion that the trailer on 21 Danforth Road is unfit for human habitation. Um, I will second. We have some discussion.
discussion around the motion. Can I make a recommendation? Yes. Sure. So the, the language of the, the regulation that establishes this process says exactly what was just stated, that that is ultimately the finding that a, a premises is unfit for human habitation. He goes on to say that the finding shall include a statement of the material facts and conditions upon which the finding is based. So essentially, what are you basing that determination on? Any material fact needs to be stated. Uh, you can do that as part of the motion. You can do it as part of your discussion. I think you have the benefit here of having two separate correspondences, one from your agent and one from the fire chief that can be relied upon and incorporated by reference. So you don't necessarily have to speak all the findings out if you reference those documents. But uh, it is important that that become um, part of your vote. So we have regulation 410. Um, so some of the most concerning ones would be uh, regulation 410, I believe that's 500, 630. <laughs> okay. Um, in the state of disrepair, roof being covered in a tarp, rotting wood. Well. this type of discussion we can also put length of time or days or because there's 24 hours for some violations those have to be adhered to is that from the date of this though the date of the order, the order, the date or of the order. The so it's just been fixed there's a provision I'm looking for here as I scroll through the dozens of pages of regulation. Um, but there's a provision concerning timing that says that uh, matters that are uh, urgent due to their nature and the dangers that they pose should generally be uh, rectified within 24 hours of the issuance of the order. Other violations are rectified or should be rectified within seven days of the order. Um, obviously, the order issued on November 7th. Today is December 4th. So not only has the 24-hour deadline passed, but the seven-day deadline has passed. Um, but insofar as the board is going to provide the applicant with some guidance and some opportunity, um, this is, a, this is a, a new proceeding based upon the order, but you could set forth new time frames, um, acknowledging that some of these were already subject to a 24-hour time frame that hasn't been complied with. Both of those propane tanks are new, right? I believe they have, you know, a stamp. You can't get it filled unless it's um, got the AOK, right? So you can They're both new tanks. Bottled one being available, and the other one is the more public one. They're a little bit to see if you can get them. The carpeting is covered over uh, with uh, only seven days. thick rubber rug and slate and granite right now. But the regulations do acknowledge, so there's a provision there that says no, that no if you order make a report, shall receive 30 calendar days for the correction of violations, so it's a 30 calendar it's day period. 
Right. Uh, the unless the hearing is conducted, which of course is what you're doing right. here. So the there's sort of presumptive 30-day period for correction, um, but you could extend it even beyond that in light of the fact that you're doing it at a, um, at a hearing. Um, you could also set forth the deadline water. contemplating okay. further inspection and then either, either notice a new or even the continue the current road. hearing without a finding I'll if you were prepared to do that. The but spots. They poured. Uh, actually, I had so, Jeremy. I so Barbara. Barbara. Excuse me? Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good. So. You, are you talking to me? I'm going to talk to you. All right. Are you talking to the paper? All right. I'm talking to you. All right. Um, with the running water. Yep. You're expecting to continue to pour money into this running water through the plumber to get it fixed? Soon? It was an option, yes. You know why? Because. Um, or would you rather save your money and. For what? Go into like a temporary housing. Well, maybe I like where I live. Maybe that's enjoyable to me. I like getting up and seeing trees, and uh, I don't like to hear negative comments from people that you know people call picking on each other and you know i maybe i that maybe i don't want that for my life maybe i'm obviously if i'm there i must feel comfortable i must like it right i my place is nice and toasty warm right now and i enjoy cutting wood i like it otherwise i wouldn't be doing it would i and uh i just like it i like where i live and I always feel like, wow, everybody, so I see that sun coming down, and I just feel but grateful. You, you, I feel grateful. I like where I live. And yes, I would possibly put money into it, but I have to rearrange. I have to get all my stuff together and see how much. I have an insurance policy. It's not a large one, but when Jerry died, he did leave me. I think he left it to me, but I have to call. I haven't even called on it yet. But these violations were supposed yes. to be repaired immediately. All right, yes, and I did have a plumber in there. Yes, I did. Okay. And I, but I was unsure about the regulations with the propane. And in the meantime, I have to uh, try to get around because my car's broken down. And my grandson came, my, my daughter's moving, and she's in the middle of a move herself. And he's up there, and he's going to be without a place. And I'm, I'm being, you know, I have a life to live besides. And Did I you have move to, in with her? I have, She's moving no. into a small place, a smaller place, and her son is not going to have a place to live. How's that? Uh, which isn't very good news. So it was a bit of an upheaval on that end. And um, all right, I, I, I'm just reading this, and I, I have two propane tanks. Yes, I do. I haven't really. Um, I mean, if I thought that that building was... We have a motion on the floor, so, I mean, so we're how, just going to... How long do these, how long do these mobile homes last for, generally? I mean, is it, you know, it was because... Barbara, I, I can't answer those questions. Um, we're going to just discuss the motion that's on the floor right now and, and hopefully no, render a vote. Just come in quick with the axe. Thanks. It's been reported that oil burner... It has been reported there's an oil burner in the basement. Who reported that? The same people that are throwing me out of my home without any question. You tell me to do things, I do them. And I'm in the middle. I can't, I don't know about propane. I mean, I thought that, you know, I mean, is I it's over and done with and we're throwing you in that place over there? We're just going to discuss. Where everybody them. goes to die? Everybody I knew went in there. Barbara. Barbara. Hello? Yes. We're just going to discuss the motion that's on the floor right now. Where is it? It's on the floor? Oh, we better get the motion on the floor? All right. There is no easy action to the basement to observe the oil burner or electrical supply. Because the oil burner is not in the Fire basement. Fire <laughs> Jesus, guys. We can extend I don't, now you're going to be really mad at me and throw me out, right? Thanks a lot. I mean, I have no idea. I do have a good law. Right. It's kind of like this good faith put in by the, uh, the occupant to try to repair some things the yep. best that they could. Um, I had a 
map of that whole electric committee. So, so uh, what? I went around from a safety. And I mapped are you the whole electric highly concerned? All written down. Like what was hooked up? Barbara, I was. I would say these aren't necessarily new conditions. Right. They've been living under these conditions for some time, so it's. it's you know, I can't say that you know there's, there's an immediate threat, but they there is. It is not in compliance with any of the uh, current. Uh, I'm sure buildings, electrical, past. fire codes that are there to ensure the occupant's safety. Yeah. So. Well, I I wanted you know at least I want I, I I have a U-Haul out there right mm -hmm. I rent this a U-Haul because I was going to clear another, away yeah, and my hut my son collected. Um, it is. You might process. coordinate. If it's um, going to be 30 days. It's an inspection that occurred that after the 30 days. The reason why if, you're, if you're going to actually issue an order, if you're going to issue a finding that the residence is unfit for human habitation, then you have to vote, and then you're issued. So then you would have to re notice it here, and you'd have to do this process over again. For yeah. If you're just going to simply order the occupant or the owner to do something, and you could do that without. Of making a finding, and you could continue tonight's proceeding to a lane. So, you th those are sort of your two options. Um, the only difference, again, being that if you don't continue the proceeding, if you take a vote tonight and you make a determination, it puts you in a better legal position because you've made that determination. But then, when there's a subsequent hearing, you have to re notice it and provide the notice the way that you did before. And I did get an estimate for the, um, that little thing that's coming out, the little extension. I got a, I, I got an that's estimate to put a, um, I had somebody look at that. They said it cost probably about eight grand to put a, I just, then I guess a metal roof on it, one, but you could do it for less with, a, with wood. The of the right. I will I personally, you continue to issue I have that thing out to there, I was going to start, the I have a, as you, a as truck up there. I was going to start picking up all the junk in the yard. Like why, you why do you put, as a property owner, I'm just happy to sort of want you to have you to continue. Yeah. You don't want me there? Are you no. willing to pay to get rid of me? <laughs> Charlene, are, are you willing to help with? No. No. Okay. Why is it that you don't want me in there, Charlene? Do you have a reason? Oh, please, let's not get in. <coughs> I'm trying to be civil. Are you? Really? Mm -hmm. You forgot your sledgehammer today then, huh? All right. Um, so the owner of record is is both. What a nut! Really this is whatever we determine here is going to go to actually both Charlene, you and Barbara. What did she think? Uh, if you're on the as as the trustee, mm -hmm. the owner of record is both you and Barbara. With this, I would assume. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that what's been noticed for today's purposes is the owner of record, which is a, a trust named after a deceased individual and a trustee who is also deceased. I think you would issue the order to that individual. Yeah. That's the only or that entity, because that's the only entity that is named in the order, right. uh, in the notice. Um, but ultimately, it's going to be delivered to these two individuals who are right. here today. Right. And we can do some research in the interim to right. I think we can do that. Sure. Yeah. I looked at the thing, and it's, it's just under those two that no, nothing else has changed. Yeah, in, in the registry. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably going to be the same thing. And if you don't want me there, who do you want there? Possibly, but the no one has permission to be against the will of the property yeah. owner. It sounds like permission was given at some point in the future. Charlene, do you have paperwork saying that you are the no, no, no. I, executor or trustee? I can bring you, if you'd like, all my mother's wills, trusts, and deeds, and the most recent one that was made. That you understand that you're which put the trustee of this. Which put me in charge. And, and, and if I, I were dead, my husband in charge. My husband died of COVID in February. And, uh, and after that, it put my brother in charge and, and my nephew. But they're both just, they're, they're all deceased except myself.
or not. Or not. Or, or not. not. <laughs> or you, you own the property. You do what you want to do. Um, I have somebody come with a tractor and, you know, <laughs> disconnect everything and knock it down and haul it away. <laughs> In which case, if this whole thing comes about, it, don't look at me, please. I really, honestly, I think they're wacky. But um, if this thing does come to fruition, I hope that's how you say it, mm -hmm. I would like the opportunity to get everything I have. That's why I have a truck out there right now. I uh, I know that they were complaining. I removed, I was actually gonna, I have replaced my rug in the living room. If you wanna go up to health standards, I've replaced my rug in my living room in the past two years, twice. Somebody brought, somebody dumped, some, even when my kid was, well, well, the past five years twice. My, my rug in my living room has been uplifted and taken out, okay? Uh, I don't live, there's nobody in my house that's, that's ill, okay, so far. Anyway, let's go to the point where uh, I would like the opportunity to get everything and anything I put in there I, uh, out of there. That's what I was doing. I have the truck. When I noticed when my husband went into the hospital because my attention was on him, I was fixing his foot. I had to um, tape up his foot a couple of times a day with Batadine, and uh, he had a week weekly visit to the wound doctor for a period of about six months. His wound healed. But I guess, I don't know, did that I, mean, to they, anyway. I don't want to interrupt so you. So my attention was upon him. So I wasn't looking in every corner. I was driving my son back and forth from work. And so when I, I, there was this much, I think it was physically done. I think some of the damages that are seen there were done by somebody, malicious damage. You don't get battery acid on your living room rug by accident. I burnt my hand, you can go and find doctor's reports. Okay. Somebody is we're, purposely we're going trying, to somebody doesn't want me there. We're going to go purposely. Right. So I we would like a chance to be able to get what I have out of there. A board member and has a a board yeah. member has a question, so I'm going to have to. Take that Who would question. I report that to? One second. The police. Go ahead, Echo. Oh, I'm just saying that. Oh, have you? Um, How about your sister Kathy saying the police um, won't do it, and I have that in writing? Police would not help you because you live in a. Just one minute. We have a board member that like to speak. I, I'd like to say that a motion has been tabled. Uh, so if we could address that motion, or if that motion has been withdrawn, um, it would be nice to know if it's been withdrawn. Yeah, I think we're still in the discussion stage of that and are about to uh, finalize our motion. Thank you, Echo. Okay. Well, then, could I add uh, something to the discussion there? Sure. Uh, based, on, based on what I've heard from the attorney, it seems like it's not really clear who um, we're, we're, we don't know for sure who the the owner of the property is right now, um, and, and, and as such, I would suggest we, we determine who the owner is and have that discussion with the owner because the the occupant of the trailer, in my opinion, um, our discussion with her is going in circles, mm. uh, and, and it would be nice to talk to the person who is the owner of the property who can take action. Yeah, I think that's what we're trying to, to figure out is the owner, but what is kind of showing in the registry of deeds is the owner of record that is on the actual notice right now is that's probably all the information we have unless Charlene can provide more information than that, that she is now the, I guess, trustee <laughs> or executor of the trust. Ultimately, what's in front of us right now are these violations, right? Now, right. Really. right. And with the violations that are in front of us are from the state code. It's not anybody from the Board of Health that made up, but it 
they're telling us that if these violations are met, then the place is unfit. And we're trying to work with um, both parties here to try to figure out what can we take as next steps if we vote on to make the habit un unfit for habitation, basically. <coughs> oh, I was trying to get estimates. I've lived there for 34 years and I like where I live, okay? And I don't know how easily I can replace it. I am not used to living in, I don't know, I mean, if you put me in Drake, it maybe I would have felt better. I know some of you said, I said that, I'm sorry, but that place, just everybody I've known went there, went there because they were on the end of life. I mean, you can live anywhere. We're, right. not, we're not saying you have to choose Tingsboro Housing Authority. We're just trying to figure out options, options on, top, on top of that. That was just one recommendation. You could I mean, how do you get in, how do you get in there anyways? I mean, everybody that I've no, ever known that lived, you know, went in there was like somebody that was just like, you know, told ready. They were dead within a couple of years. I want to okay. you know, that's the way I felt. Well, Debbie, she was totally disabled, so she went back and lived with her mother. And then my father's girlfriend lived there. Everybody I've known that went in there. I mean, are there different, I don't know that much about housing, but I think there's like Section 8 over on, you know, and I know that somebody told me about a place in Drake, and I think this, my daughter mentioned a place in North Chumford that, um, Those H-SPAN people that, oh, the H-SPAN yeah. people yeah, that yeah. contact you, they, they can help you they probably find housing wherever. One. But it's just the fact that you're, you're taking me, like, I really honestly, Almost go, ah, well, you just tell me to live there because everybody I know that lived there was just on their way out. And like with the thing with COVID and that, We're I, 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 just want to I feel myself safe. And you know something? I almost handed the, I almost handed that form of the five grand. I just wasn't sure if it was, you know, like these guys, they, they you know about permits. Those two propane tanks are brand new. I, we just uh, I don't live in danger. Okay. I know, we just want to emphasize we're trying to Unless figure out how the, how the problems can be fixed. Which is quite obvious. How long does it, do you have a uh, statute of limitations to, uh, to, to, to prove that a crime has been committed against you? You know what I'm saying? And that somebody's trying to drive me out of that place and they can't wait for me to go. So, Mr. Chair, if I could, if I could how, how do you do that? So, the, the, issue, the issue that's before the board is whether the premises is unfit but for human habitation. Um, we started off early in this discussion talking about al alter alternative locations um, okay? for habitation. That's okay. an accommodation by the board. That's not even within the purview of the board. We just tried to offer that as an accommodation for the property owner. And a dog. I don't so we're not dog. telling the property owner, or the, I should say the occupant, we're not telling the occupant where she has to go. Right. We're just telling her that if she doesn't rectify the issues that render the premises unfit for, habitation, for, for human habitation, then it'll it'll likely be condemned and yeah. potentially demolished. Then it'll no longer be available for habitation. Yeah. So there are options available. That can be a discussion for another day. I'm sure they carry will make herself available. I'm sure that other town officials, uh, the, the the trust, the housing authority will make themselves available. But that's that's not right. really part of the determination for right. tonight. Right. Exactly. So you understand that we're just trying to determine whether the house is habitable. Okay. Not not what you're going to do or whatever. We're, we're literally focusing at on the structure. Moment, at this moment right now? Yeah. Um, okay, so, but we have a motion on the floor that we'd like to kind of push through right now. Okay. All right. Hold on. No. Well, the original motion oh, I get that it. I created was that it was unfit for human habitation. What I didn't add to that was based off of the Board of Health order dated November 7th and the Tingsboro Fire Department dated November 7th concerns mm -hmm. uh, and actual violations to the state code. So that was the original Original. with that addition that we to look at the actual code violations from the state that the house is deficient in. Okay. So I think we can probably even just vote on that initially and then do another possible motion to figure out what we're going to do after that. So does the board understand the motion
motion that is on the table that there is a dwelling that has been inspected by the Board of Health as well as the fire department as being in violation of state stan sanitary codes and that it meets a um, determination of unfit for human habitation. That is what I understand is the motion that's on the floor and if we want to take a vote on that, we, that would be what is the motion on the floor for right now. And we can take further steps from there. So I'd like to make a I just like a vote time with, uh, you know, time to I'm in favor of the motion that's on the floor. Yes, I have to vote. Uh, I have to vote, but I have to Sheila, how do you vote? In favor. Steve, how do you vote? In favor. Echo, how do you vote? Uh, I would abstain from the vote. Okay. All right. Um, so now that we have understood that the order um, is in compliance with the state sanitary code, now there's a you may want to make a, a motion to determine if these repairs could be made or extended of timelines. I assume to try to come up to some compliance. And if that is to be revisited in the future at a, a future hearing date. Well, I would make a motion to provide Barbara with a 30-day grace period to have all of these codes met. 30 days. And then we would come back. We would continue. We would have a continuancy. No. No, you, you provide a new notice. You can't continue because you've taken a vote, so the proceeding is effectively will be concluded after tonight. But you could you could reconvene. I mean, the, the options that you have available to you is you can provide a, a deadline and you could simply notice a new hearing <coughs> for a further determination uh, of noncompliance with the code and unfit for hap human habitation. And at that point, also consider if you so choose these issues of um, condemnation and, and vacating. That's one way to. To do this, another way to do it is to now that you've voted unfit for human habitation, you can vote to order the resident to vacate and declare the premises condemned if not complied with within 30 days. And then that puts the burden on the applicant to appeal that determination to come back before you for a hearing. And if the applicant doesn't, then that kicks in and it's deemed to be condemned uh, and she's deemed ordered vacated from the premises. She can come back, she can appeal that, she can seek an extension of that deadline, but it sort of shifts the the, the burden or the obligation onto the onto the occupant of the, or the property owner, or the property owner. Right. I mean, these notices are going to both because we're dealing with a situation where we have personal property and real property. And from what we can tell today, there are there are there, there's a different owner of the personal property than there is of the real property, and we're not even certain who the owner of the real property is based upon what's been presented. So notices have gone to both, and will continue. To done by a licensed person. Okay. And they need permits. All right. Any, and, any, and I think any anything you any, do there is just gonna snowball further and further any, into uh, no, I, problems. You're talking about any um okay. yes, yes, plumbing, yes, gas, yes, building, yes, roofing, yes, roofing yes, anything. I, if, every every if anything you, needs a license. I think people are to make repairs just gonna you know what in there. I don't want her to do that. I, and yeah. But I also, yeah. Yes. I'm not 100% sure. Oh my God. Is that right? 
Yeah, I will tell you, I'm not sure that it really matters because we've heard. Uh, I mean, it certainly matters if the representation is not untruthful. But if if if, if, the, um, if Charlene is being truthful, stating that she is the sole remaining trustee or executrix or personal representative, she's also stated on the record multiple times now that she has no intention of doing anything. Um, she's essentially using the board to get her tenants out of the property. Um, so. I was given the option. It, it's it, it's hard because it's not the n normal landlord tenant situation. And uh, actually, one of the police officers that came when my car was vandalized suggested that I apply, it, that that I go to the board of health and have it condemned because he said he saw no problem in having seeing it condemned, and he told me that would be the simpler route. Maybe I, I regret listening to those words. Because <laughs> uh, it is a little complicated. But do you want, to whom should I bring uh, the trust documents for you, for who's ever screwed me? Now, you're the town attorney? I am. And, I, and what is your name, please? Adam Costa, C O S T A. Okay. I'm just grabbing everybody on these keys. Bring, this, bring the documents to you. Then you can scan them together. To make yeah. 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 Bring them to Carrie. Yeah. She'll, yeah. she'll scan them and get them over. And I was going to go to jail. That's what she said. Those are my chemicals. Did you say that? What? Those are my chemicals. Did you say that? Yes, sir. With your you're permission. Yeah. I, I just want to echo what I think with Carrie's concerns that how the board speaks to her. You know, I, I would just hate to see it encourage her to dump more of her own mm -hmm. time and money into something I'm that is going to not same thing. You know, so, benefit you know, her in the long run. How long can you, how long does a mobile home last? I mean, this is a 1970 mobile home, but it's got a structure on the roof that my husband's friend who worked in, um, he worked in construction his whole life. He, him and his friend. Right, were, but we just they don't. They put a roof over it. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a, it's like a roof you put on your home. Yeah, I, I wouldn't How know the. How long does something like that? I, I, I don't know. I would, if I stayed there, I would put Simply Safe up. Is what I'm trying. To right. So, so one thing you would have the ability. I know there we're are talking about different options. Definitely. If you went with something like option That's two, which is a, a, a deadline, uh, failure to comply renders the premises effectively condemned and amounts to an order to vacate. In an effort to try to work I mean, with the occupant, you could announce here tonight, even though it's in the code, um, that way. she has the opportunity to seek extensions. And if she can seek those extensions, if she does so in a timely manner, if she's making progress. And the progress doesn't need to be progress putting money into the mobile home. That's option one. I can't tell her not to do that. That's her choice. But option two is making progress toward finding a place to, to which she can relocate. Understanding that once she does that, the she'll, she'll make no further requests for extensions and the premises will be condemned. Um, to her concern about having an opportunity to get in there, I mean, nobody's trying to condemn the premises to destroy personal possessions and there's always an opportunity, typically, to get in there and to, to remove personal possessions and things of that sort. So that, that's the logistics that will come later. Right. So I do have a truck right out there right now that I, I'm, I'm trying to comply but with I, you but guys. I, but I, I think 30 days right is out your reasonable, right out there. but also I, I, looking I, I at the, the scope the and the breadth and extent of these, it's really good to identify the 30 days. Was, no, it's not going to be that very costly. Yeah. 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 Whatever yeah. 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 But conversely, right, so conversely, let's say she tries to relocate. I'm not sure she's going to get an application and get approved and get relocated in more than 30 days. That's aggressive, too. It just doesn't typically happen that quickly. 60, 90. So, I'm not saying the 30 day time frame is wrong. Really I realize that you need to show some urgency here no. as a town that you've, it's been brought to your attention that there's a premises that is in this condition. But at the same time, you have to expect that there may be requests for extensions. But that's the time frame you're going to set up because there's a lot here to do if she's going to make repairs to the property. And if she's not, she's going to try and relocate. That's a lot to accomplish within 30 days, even if the application goes in tomorrow. I do have help, and none of us are sick, all right? And I have a brand new kitchen sink in there. I have a brand new faucet in there. I have a brand new countertop in there. Well, well, well right. That's why I say, you know, there's a you know there's I mean? a degree of urgency and here, and that's something that's brought to the attention of the town. I don't doubt that the conditions have been like this probably for a decade or more. Who knows? But now that they've been brought to the attention of the town, and now that you've just declared it unfit for human habitation, I'm 
there does need to be some diligence on the part of the town. Um, you can't force what you can't force, but you can certainly apply deadlines and then either expect that there's a showing that efforts have been made to relocate or that there's a showing that efforts have been made to address the violations one way or the other. So I'm, I really honestly, I was just going to move my stuff. I don't really, you know, she and I always just don't get along. But, nope. it, but I do have a truck out there to remove anything and everything I did, you know, right. is enough to pull. Okay? It's right there. And I was going to do that this weekend. I put the new stove, you know, black. We're, we're black just, we're just concerned. Black enamel stove pipe. I want to get simply safe. Okay. okay. We're, we're just concerned that you're going to pour money into this dwelling to try to bring it up to codes and it might never ever ever get there. Yeah. And, you know what I mean? I, and, I, yeah. and I don't want to. I, I am too I guess in a way. But I, right. I don't want to do that to you as well because I don't think that's that's fair to you to waste your money on something that is not probably going to make the new code standards, okay? So do you do you understand so what we're- So that's why I was questioning, do we have any other places that have mobile homes that are aged, like not just aged people, do we have any aged mobile homes around that we could say this could be done? I mean, do we have anything to compare? The age of a mobile home, do they say like after so many years, they're not workable. I, Do we I, have mobile home parks that we could look in and say, oh wow, there's a 1969 mobile home. It's working perfect. Uh, should I expect this thing to be down the tubes at a certain... I, I Do don't, we have any? Well, I just, I, I just want to let you know, I don't know the answer to that, but if we did, is that going to... How about antique cars? But is that going to change your situation? Your situation My right situation, now? yes, because if, 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 it's, if the thing is feasible to be fixed up and to be up to standard. Barbara, in all honesty, I would think you would have to buy a, a new, new residence and put it on the land. I do not believe okay. that this residence is ever, ever gonna, you think going to get back. It'll get close to the potential codes, maybe, and that yeah. is a huge stretch. You're, yeah, you're yeah, only uh, your your only other option would buy a brand new mobile home and put it there. Yeah. Or perhaps alternative housing someplace. But at the end of the day, this we can sit here and try to come up with a number of solutions, which we've been doing. But I don't want you losing whatever monies you have. Well, that's why I was asking if. You, you could come right out and say that, but do you have any other, you know, proof? I mean, are there mobile home parks around? How, what is the, generally, do these things last for X amount of years? And, and then we have to say. Normally, you know, a mobile home community tells people they will kick them off of the place that they rent, because you rent monthly for a mobile home community. Yeah. They would kick you off of the facility so in the state of what you're living in. You would be told years ago to have left, to be very honest with you. The place that you have. I have heater tapes on my, um, from my pump, all right? We have well water. I, but I, Only Barbara, me drinks that water. Go live, why don't you move to Lawrence and see how nice it is. They have very good gas lines down there. I have one simple small gas line that goes maybe 10 feet into my house. It's brand new. It, it, it was installed when I moved in there. Well, it's brand new, can't be now. And, but it's right there. It's to be seen. It's not buried somewhere, all right? My water has water that comes from a well, which is 60 feet from where I live. And unless somebody comes up and physically dumps something in my well, then I am safe, I feel. 
I feel I'm safer there than a lot of other people are. But, you know, it depends on how you think about it. But, Barbara, the state code is the saying state, just the, the opposite. The state code also says that my furnace is in the cellar. And they couldn't no, the state it. code is not the, saying I don't that think the they furnace will, right. is in the well, cellar. Well, my furnace is not in the cellar, nor has it ever been in the cellar. And that's what it says on here. Is it the state man right that? No, I wrote that. that you did. State. You did. Oh, my goodness. And I happen to sit right next to you. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> you did that. Thank you. I'm glad you did that. Now I can poke fun at you. So I'm sorry. I don't mean to do that. But the fact is, I don't feel. I feel that I'm that the that you to bring up the code or what not? Her car. My cars have been vandalized twice, and someone else threatened when I was there, and it told that I threw. Uh, chemicals and yeah. I was going to go to jail and that I'm a bad person yeah. and I really don't know think. what kind of dream in the world you know you exist in. I've never done anything bad to yeah, anyone so yeah. out there yeah. ever. And, and, and respectfully I, I don't think you can make the determination as to where she spends her money right, right. so I, I don't disagree with anything you've said it's just uh -huh. not the role of the board to make that determination yeah. as to so I think that has to be an either or situation that has to be a period of time after which you deem the premises condemned and, and you order the occupant vacated and what happens in that period of time or any extensions is up to the occupant. Whether it's a relocation, whether it's spending money on a problem, problems that may not ever be fixed to the satisfaction of the code and the board and the, and the town officials, that's up to the property owner or the mobile home owner or occupant. Eco had his hand. Yes, Eco, you have a question. Um, I mean, part of it has been slightly addressed by the attorney, uh, but what I was saying, what I was going to ask was um, a motion was put forth that um, the, the dwelling was in violation of the health codes that are listed um, in the letter 13 of them. Yep. And um, a motion has passed. So my question is, is this, what's the next step? Uh, for the occupants or what directive is being given on this issue? That is a very good question. That's what we're trying to determine right now. <laughs> so if, if maybe I can attempt to answer that. Um, so once a determination has been made that the premises are unfit for human habitation, there's typically more that's required of the board. The board has to say what that means in terms of the continued functionality of the residence. Um, it's been deemed unfit, but that's different, at least in, in terms of the regulations, that's different from a determination that the premises are to be condemned or an order that the occupant of the premises vacate the premises. And so when you turn to the section of the regulations that provides the procedures we're following today, it first talks about that vote of unfitness for human habitation. And then it says, at the same time, or at any time after the board issues that finding of unfitness for human habitation, the board may issue an order condemning the residence or portion thereof, and an order to vacate the residence or portion thereof, and an order requiring the owner to secure the residence or portion thereof. So that is the next step for you to determine if you're prepared to issue one of those orders or you're prepared to provide a time frame for these code violations to be rectified, after which that determination would kick in and the premises would be deemed condemned or unfit for, or condemned or uh, the occupant deemed uh, ordered to vacate the premises. Does that answer your question, Echo? Yes, I did. Um, I heard the answer. Thank oh, you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have another question? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to make a motion, actually. Okay, good. Um, I'd like to make a motion that uh, the, the Board of Health Director occupant 
uh, to secure the dwelling and make repairs to the dwelling um, that are up to code um, and communicate back to the board by the board's next meeting in January as to what steps have been made. Okay. Um, to end, um, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Echo, I think, um, can you hear us discussing that if we go in that direction with your motion, um, that um, we could possibly be forcing the occupant to spend money on something that is probably too far reaching in that time frame for, for repair? Yes, I do understand that. Um, and, and what I've heard repeatedly from the lady is her reluctance to move out of the dwelling that she's in, her reluctance to go into another dwelling, um, and, and she's saying she's willing to spend the money. And I think it's not our decision to make as to whether the money being spent will be a futile venture or a productive venture. It's up to the occupant to make that decision as to do I want to spend the money to repair it? Or do I want to move out? I think I think um, our decision is to, one decision has been made in saying that the, the dwelling is unfit for habitation. Um, the next thing, the next move after that is what next? What next is an option that is given to the occupant as in determining for herself does she want to continue to stay there? Does she want to move out and have the building condemned? If she wants to move out and she wants to ask for 60 days, 90 days, I think that's something that she... Okay, I think we'll just move on. Um, there's a motion on the floor and then we can take a vote whether to that motion or um, or not in favor of the motion. Um, You're not going to want to do that until he's back. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so that we can vote. Yes. You're frozen, Eco, if you can hear us. I would wait a, a couple minutes. I mean, you can you have enough members here, but he did make the motion. So <laughs> 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 Do you want to call in? Yeah. Snowblower. Call, call my phone number. I don't know. It's 978-479-3097. Oh, well. Okay. Yeah, my <laughs> 
talking about making repairs to it, making fixes, buying a carbon monoxide detector, um, venting out the wood stove properly and all that. She, by her own words, is stating that she's willing to make repairs. She also, by her own words, is stating her reluctance to move out of the dwelling place. Um, I think it is not our determination to make whether it's an, it, it, it's an exorbitant um, it's the public use of our resources to to um, make the repairs or not make the repairs. I think it's up to her to make those decisions. And so what my motion is seeking to do is for her to go back, uh, get a contractor to put estimate to the repair that needs to be made. She has to make a determination as to whether she can afford the repairs or not and report back to the Board of Health in January as to what the cost of the repairs will be and if she's willing to make those repairs. Okay. Um, so with your motion, we were going to take a vote. Um, so I'm going to do the roll call now, okay, Echo? So just to be clear, exactly what is this motion? Can you re reiterate it, please? Yeah. Um, I'd like to make a motion for the occupant of the building to make an assessment as to whether they can afford and are willing to make the repairs to the structure to bring it up to code and to report back to the Board of Health by our next meeting date in January. So the other things we could do is also give like, like a 30 day the building, and in those 30 days, you can do the assessment of whether you want to repair or um, find other housing. But in 30 days, you have to vacate, which you also could apply for extensions and to fix one thing and to come back to the board for something else. So this could be. I'm going to vote on your motion as not in favor. Sheila? Not in favor. Steve? In favor. Okay. Echo? In favor. Okay. It doesn't go anywhere. Doesn't go anywhere. Correct. Motion fails. Motion fails. Okay. Does anybody else have any other motion? I make a motion that Barbara O'Coin vacates the residence within 30 days. And if she's there past the 30 days, the residence will be condemned. Property will be condemned. Extensions. Extensions. She can certainly appeal the determination, either of the determinations you've made tonight, but she can also Apply. accept them and seek extensions of the 30-day deadline if she's making progress, either either fixing the code violations or making progress toward relocating to a, to a different, a different uh, dwelling. And this type of motion would? In the middle of the winter, we want me to replace the roof. I mean, I couldn't, like, when I was This type of motion would make it so that would ma we'd make more sense there's to some adherence. It should reinforce what I have right now, which yeah. I do have the wood to do. The urgency of the I'll, I'll be discussing the motion because I didn't hear anybody to 
No, no, it has. It has not been seconded. I'm just trying to get some clarification. It hasn't been seconded yet. I'm just trying. I to thought it just was a string of numbers. That's what you. Do you want to second? Somebody want to second the motion before we discuss further? Yeah. Like what? Trying to think of. Yeah, I just took out a jury from the. Yeah, I will second this motion, and so we can have a further discussion on it. All right. Um, motion's been seconded to vacate the property in, in 30 days, which then you can appeal and uh, ask for extensions and stuff like that. Um, does anybody have any discussion? Do you think that is giving some leeway in? figure out what they want to do with their finances, whether they want to pour money into the dwelling or seek. I, I think this, in one way of me seconding, was to provide some sense of urgency to the matter that's at hand. We just voted that it was an unfit habitat, but now we want to try to figure out direction they want to go. Um, there's at least a, a, a urgency on top of it plus the penalty if they're not going to put any urgency into the matter. I'm just torn. I mean, it's, it's, I'm the last person that wants to throw somebody out of their house. Um, but I can it's obviously major disrepair. Contact and stuff. So I'm very torn, so I'm struggling. I apologize. Right. I might put cameras up. No, I also don't want to tell somebody how to spend the money. You know? Right. Right. And that's why right. This is a very difficult situation. Like I said, I ripped the rug up twice. Once it hit battery acid on it. So I, mean, I guess. And big scars across the front of my refrigerator. I'm, I'm amenable to that motion. Maybe. If I put cameras yeah, it, up. Yeah, it's something that I'm not trying to like. It wouldn't be in disrepair because it wasn't. Force anything on, on the occupant, but it's also like, all right, support. this is a serious situation. Let's let's try to figure out what you want to do with this. Um, Nobody tries to help and, me. And you know, given that it will be in the middle of winter, I don't know how much. Yeah, I mean, can be done during. <laughs> you want to be the by blue cloth in the middle of the winter time and ask for an extension and has legal. I had somebody look at it. Yeah. Um, Quotes from individuals. I think this gives us an opportunity if she yes. decides to move out 30 days to like get all her valuables and maybe she'll find something that's a better living condition. Is it inappropriate to, for me to offer a comment? To no, I think no, this is the discussion is a comment. Is, I think the other part of this that I think puts it into context is the as far as we know, the owner or the representative of the trust that owns the property doesn't want the property fixed. I considered that. I didn't so know it was an I just, I'm just throwing it out there in case we got that part. That it's, ball. yeah, that is a very strong feeling. And the, the likelihood of it being brought within meeting all of the town's bylaws and state codes is unlikely, you know, I think is the, the best way to put it. Can I say something? My, one of my concerns is that if she starts to spend money, she spends $6,000 on this plumbing. That's just going to keep snowballing right. all, I don't know. to, to I the don't rest know. of the I trail. You know, he's going to be starting with a water heater and, and a stove. It, this is going to carry over to probably, possibly frozen or cracked pipes that go to the bathroom. Right. That go no, it's a proverbial can of worms. No, no. Yes, but I also hesitate to tell somebody how to spend money. I, I am 100% with you. There's no good answer. She owned the property. I think it's a whole heater different story. Right. Right. No, I, I, I have the same thought. You know what those right. are? You wrap them around. You, you, you Did you have a question of the chairman? I don't know, but you guys seem to have all something to say. I'm telling you there were heater tapes underneath the trailer. But, you know, so the pipes didn't freeze. Otherwise, the pipes could freeze anywhere, couldn't they? But uh, there were heater tapes under there. The two spots that are leaking, I don't believe are under the trailer. I don't think there's anything leaking under the trailer. 
There was two spots in my house that were leaking. They were the same two spots that were leaking when my house was vandalized and my hand was burnt on battery acid in the middle of my living room rug. We're not. I, my, you know, you, you're not here to try to protect me. No, you're here to just throw stuff at me, let people hurt me, and then throw me out of my house a month after my husband died. And then I'm going to put up a camera that says simply safe, and maybe I'll get my stuff out of there, and I'd like to be comfortable about the next place that I go. Hopefully, I won't run into anything like this again. Because nobody's trying to help me. Nobody says anything about me. You guys are, oh, yeah, well, I think that, well, you know what, there's heater tapes. I put them on. Wrap them around the pipes. No leaks in the cellar, all right? None. No furnace in the cellar. None. All right? Furnace is brand new. Now, how do I get rid of that? You know what I mean? We're what do I do? Walk away? I just had a log splitter. I have a brand we're new not engine. We're not right. discussing the, the as, violations right now. As far right as I'm now. concerned, somebody wants me out of there. They're getting away. My, I have a letter from her sister that says to me, uh, She's been dead for years. I don't care Barbara. how long she's been dead. I have a letter that says, You are not, nobody is, the police are not going to help you because you live in a legal trailer. I um, obviously you can see for some reason Miss Charlene does not like me. I don't know why, because I never did anything to hurt her or her sister or anybody for that matter. I was nice to her mother. I was nice to her sister. I got along with Meg, and I got along with Kathy before. She got disease, she got hepatitis or whatever it was. So we have a motion. I don't know. I didn't. Echo, do you have any more to add to the discussion? She doesn't. She might not own that side of the street, is what I'm trying to tell you. No, I don't. I, I would According like to, to the lawyer, I'd like to vote on it. Okay. That her brother died. Okay, can we just reiterate the motion since the but we need to back out of the case, we Barbara, can we just... Yes, and I made a motion that Barbara Coyne vacates the residence within 30 days, after which the residence will be condemned. And with that, we can. You can add um, for you can ask for extensions and show good faith and <coughs> whatever you've done to the place. But so I, what you know what so now you right. right. So the, the decision that issues is going to be a decision in writing. That's going to be your recommendation anyway. Right. Whether can Carrie drafts it or I draft it, I'm happy to review I it. Can get we can, to you can decide how you want that, that to be done. I've but the decision that issues will specify. The votes if that I were taken, the motions that thing. were made, etc. Yeah, I mean, It'll also go on to say so explicitly, if you wanted to, that extensions can be granted upon reasonable notice, right. and of course, it'll it'll apprise the the recipients of their appellate rights, their ability to appeal it pursuant to the language and the regulations. So anyway. They'll have those options. And that's why I like it. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. we can add that to mm -hmm. to and that cool to help in with the summer, and that hot sun. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take a roll call vote. Um, I vote in favor of the motion on the floor. Sheila? In favor. Uh, Steve? In favor. Echo? Not in favor. Okay, so three, one, zero. Oh my god. Three, three, zero, one. He, oh, no, he's now. So three, one, zero. Correct. Okay. How do you want the decision to be drafted? Do you want me to attempt to draft it? Do you want to draft something? It doesn't matter to me. That you can draft it. I don't know what it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, when is the board meeting next? So my suggestion might be, particularly given the turnaround here, that you take one further vote, which would be to authorize one of you to sign the decision once it's completed. It can be drafted within a week or so. And issued, but I wouldn't suggest you wait until your January meeting to sign it because by the time it issues, there'll be hardly any time left on the 30 days. Mm -hmm. I make a motion that the chair signs the order. <laughs> Seconded. <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. What order are we talking about? <laughs> to sign the order that uh, the lawyer drafts up for, for us for the um, decision. The decisions that were just made for tonight. Is, it, is that an amendment to Sheila's first motion, or is it a different motion? Different motion. It's just authorizing Mike to sign the order. 
so to get the, the ball rolling. Instead of all of us here at a meeting <coughs> signing it and waiting until January 8th. Uh, I'm opposed against that. Okay. And the rest of you should vote roll call because you have a member who, so you should you should refill on that because you didn't you didn't take a roll call vote and you have a member participating remotely, so we okay. would invalidate the vote. Vote, yeah. Okay. Um, motion to have uh, the chair, have the, the chair uh, sign the new order that is um, going to be drafted up um, to get the, um, the consistent with tonight's votes. Con consistent with tonight's votes. Oh All right. Um, so do we have a second to that motion? Is there a time frame for that motion? I think you want to do a roll call vote rather than all of us just saying yes. Yeah, that right, one at a time. Yeah. Same way you did with the other votes. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to take a vote that I'm in favor. Um, Sheila? In favor. Um, Steve? In, in favor. favor. Echo, are you in favor or not? I'm not in favor. So I'll get that over to Carrie in the next couple of days. She okay. can review it and then it'll make its way to you. All right. All right. Uh, before we forget, can we have your name? Please? My name is Dave Winkowski. Thank you. Just a friend of Charlie's. Okay. Yeah. Can you spell? W I N. Come and spell. No. K O W S K I. Yeah. Can we have your name? Thank you. Longer here. No one. Yeah, that would be the end of that here. We can move on to the next. What is it? We're going to adjourn this hearing. Okay. Yeah. Do you, under, do you understand well, our. I could hear you all mumbling, and um, uh, what do I have, 30 days? Is that what it is? Uh, uh, so, um, and what am I supposed to do within this 30 days? You, you just tell the two votes that were taken. Maybe? Yep. So the two votes that we took tonight were. Um, one that we determined the the dwelling unfit for habitation, human habitation. You have based on the state codes, okay. You have Not, determined it. Yes, we unfit. are unfit. We are agreeing with the violations that are uh, that were deemed, okay. Right. The second vote was for in the next thirty days to. An order to vacate, is, is an order to vacate the dwelling, okay, in the next 30 days, or we're going to condemn it. Now, wait, With, the first one you said was what? It is a, it, it is a condemn un, Unfit now. for human habitation. Unfit for human Correct. habitation. There's a difference between that and condemning it. Cor Correct. There's a difference. There's a difference. There's two parts to two it. Two parts to it. So the part one is condemning, I mean, um, deeming it unfit for human habitation. The second part is um, an order. It. Yeah, that you have to Remove move out. Them. You have to break it up and throw it out. Y you have to is move that out. Condem is that? Order to vacate. So what is con well, unfit for human habitation? Uh, all right, so. Um, and she point. she has the right to appeal and get her own lawyer to Correct. help her with this, right? Right. Correct. There will be a decision it r issued in writing within the next several days. You'll receive it. It'll spell out for you what the votes were. With respect to you being ordered to vacate in 30 days or else it's condemned, you have the ability to appeal that. You also have the ability to ask this board for extensions. Now, you guys, you told me earlier, right, on this paper, a list of things to fix, right? And one of them was the plumbing. So um, I have it half fixed. Uh, I, I mean, th there's nothing wrong. With, if there, first off, I, I suspected that the water might be poisoned because there was large things found in the yard, and I thought 
Could I speak? Because this is well, my life. You, are you, I, I, I would like to speak for a minute, all yeah, right? Yeah, no, I... All right, so I was suspicious that it was possible where I had leaks bust out in two places in my place, which never happened before, upstairs in the bathroom and next to the water heater. Both places started leaking at the same time. There was nothing leaking under, un, down underneath. Right? But I still had a suspicion when the pump went out that there was poison in my water and somehow making it melt the pipes. But of course I also saw some, whatever. The pump is turned on, all right? I paid a man to come up. I called Angie's list and I had a person that specifically works with pumps. He came up and got the pump running. The pump goes up to 35 to 40 pounds of clearance or whatever it's supposed to do. The water comes up through the pipes and it breaks in the same two places that it did two years ago. And I just, I taped it up physically myself with flexi bandage and silicone. I, my, where it was leaking, it worked for that much time. But if there was something wrong with the water and it was causing leaks. It would leak in more than just those two places. I suspected that somebody took some sort of a solvent that melts glue, because I always shot the camera shells and I went into this particular store, and when I went in there, the guy that was following me around staring at me. He, he's a person that lives in town, and he was staring at me. And I would go to a different department, he was staring at me. I had to play with solvent, melts all kinds of glue. So I think that what somebody did was paint on those pipes, which were easy to easy access. They didn't go under the trailer. Can I ask you a question, what? Barbara? Yes. Do you have any questions from the board about your rights after these decisions tonight? All right. So these, yeah, I do. Like what you said, <coughs> in a, in one month, you want me to do what? Get my personal belongings out of there? Is that what it is? Is it what? That's what you're saying? Try to find someplace else to live. You're trying, to, you're trying to tell me to get my... And, and there's multiple agencies in town that will help you. You're trying to tell me to get my things out of there. It's not... It's not the, the, the order will state that you have to vacate within 30 days. You have the option during that 30-day period to fix all the issues, not partly, not one or two, 16 issues, fully fix them, or make significant progress. 16 issues. They're all listed in the paperwork you received. They're right in front of you. Those two documents right there. And so who's going to who's going to review this? Who's going to review what? Whether or not I have these all fixed. Well, you have the ability during the 30 days to ask for an extension if you feel you're making progress fixing those items, or you can find a different residence, a different dwelling. You could relocate. And again, if you're having trouble doing that within 30 days, you can ask for an extension. The board's been discussing extensively the possibility of extensions, recognizing that it's a lot to accomplish in 30 days. Whether you're fixing the premises or you're relocating from the premises, either way, it's a lot to do in 30 days. But they've given you 30 days with the idea that you can seek extensions in advance. Oh, I can, if, if so, so I could possibly be working on this and mm -hmm. just get a different plumber that wasn't going to charge me six Car grand for the corner. See, that's what it is. I was going to shop around. The plumber that did the, yeah, yeah, no, they they did the um, pump, he... So the hearing is over. We just want to make sure you understand everything before, you know... So within 30 days, so I have another appointment to come back here? Or You'd I have, have to request I have to, it. I have to get a lawyer? Uh, you don't have to. You probably should, or you can, if you, if you disagree. Well, I have no, um, I suppose I should talk to the lawyer because I really don't have any um, communication with, and I really don't even, so I'd like to make a motion Jerry just to was take a five mailing, minute break. He was mailing Okay, so um, all in favor from the board members to take he, a five minute break. He was mailing her a check, so. I'm going to take a roll call. Sheila, are, are you in favor? In favor. Steve? In favor. Mike, I'm in favor. And Echo, are you in favor for a five-minute break? 
So I should get a lawyer? Yes. All right, thank you. We're going to take a five minute break here, okay?
Yep. Yeah. There you go. So, you have to keep going. so within 30 days, what, what should you expect from me? Do you expect me to be going out of there? Pretty much. And if you need to get an extension with a lawyer to try to get an extension, and I should be doing work to try to get an Father, get a lawyer. Yeah. Get, a, get a lawyer. Actually, in a friendly way, right? Yes. In a friendly way, yes. Barbara. Barbara. <laughs> For your own good. What? Get a lawyer? Yeah. Good, yeah. I, there is a man that's been calling my husband has a lawyer. And, and this man has been calling me. I got a call now. Okay, bye, Bill. Thank you. Bye, Barbara. I love Thank you, Barbara. Good luck. Well, I need it, right? So should I continue on working <laughs> as to try and just clean up the property? Or yeah, I have this party. Oh, I got it. I was going to go. Just call them tomorrow. I could call them? Yep. Yep, tomorrow. Because I have a question. Yep. Yep. Yes. I got it. I got this van and the I, mics are open. I was just about to try to bring the scrap metal down to, you know, call the scrap metal. Should I go through this hard work or nothing? Just call them just tomorrow, call them tomorrow, tomorrow. and they'll help you. Yeah. Call them tomorrow. tomorrow. I, I can call you guys. And yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, so. Next item on the agenda is to, uh, we're going to skip over the private loan regulations and I'm going to table them to our next meeting. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Is there a go? You want to go? No, aye, sorry. Thank you. No, no problem. Okay, so the next meeting, next item on the agenda is meeting minutes. From November 13, 2023. After briefly looking at page one, Angela, I just have a quick adjustment, I guess, to my yeah. name. <laughs> e. Let E at the end of Rouge. This was a different mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no M. Just to see if he's on his toes. I'm doing oh, it is every weird. Month. It's only up there, but then yeah. it's not down when you opened it. Nope. The damn word does. <laughs> Oh, it's up here too. Oh. And your name is Chairman. Okay. Are we? Yeah, it's right there. Thanks. But the E, which is correct. No. Oh, it is correct. That oh. is correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so yeah. that little E. That little E. That E you were talking about? I could see it. It just sticks out like a story bomb. It's like having your name spelled backwards. It's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. I make a motion. We accept the minutes. Second. of November 13th Sorry. as written with the accept, uh, addition of the E at the end of Michael's last name. I'll second it. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. No. Roll call. Aye. Because roll call. Okay. Roll call is uh, Sheila. In favor. Steve. In favor. Aye. Michael Rocher in favor. Echo. In favor. Okay. I make a motion that we close the meeting of whatever day this is, December 4th at 8.50. I second that and then I'll um, take a roll call, I guess, would be then. Sheila, are you in favor? In favor. Steve? In favor. Mike, are you in favor? Echo? In favor. Excellent. Okay, meeting is adjourned.